Hello everyone, just want to give you a quick update on the new PWN ALMMC material for the Unreal Engine. Uh, for those who don't know, the ALMMC is the Auto Landscape Material and Masking Compositor material that I made. It's the, That's the reason why it's called that, is because it's, it's a really long name, but it does what it, the name says to some extent. So uh, this is the old one right here. Um, and this is the new one. This is the master project uh, that I was using to build it. So this will be the new one. So when you download this material, um, this is what you'll be seeing inside of the, your library. Um, and there's a lot of changes from this one. So you'll see it's called ALMMC Tri. Uh, that's for Tri Planner. Uh, when you launch it, you'll notice that it says ALMMC 2. Now, the reason why that's the case is because this is indeed the version 2 of ALMMC um, but I put try in the project name that way I know that it's differentiated between the non tri planer and the tri planer so um, technically speaking the original material was tri planer mapped it was just broken for some reason but it's now been fixed and it's in this version um, and you don't get texture stretching anymore so it all works about the same. Uh, you you also notice that when you first open the version 2, you're greeted with a different splash screen as well as uh, only one more level. So in the original, I included four levels, each for the different resolutions that you can import at. However, that created a lot of compatibility and performance issues, which would make it so Epic wouldn't allow me to put this on the marketplace. <clears throat> so I removed that, um, and this this uh, example here is a 2K map, and the level, uh, and if you go to levels, level 1 right here, this is also a 2K map, but that does not change the functionality of ALMMC. You can still in import a 4K or an 8K map if you want. Um, I just used lower resolutions because I don't know what their people at Epic's, uh, what the people at Epic are using to open up the projects that you send or want to upload to the marketplace but apparently they were unable to and uh, created a whole bunch of problems for them so they would never accept it so I just went with smaller resolution files and uh, everything works out fine you also notice that the performance impact is not nearly as great um, in this case I'm getting about 80 frames per second We'll just say that, but it can go as high as 120, I've noticed. In the older version, we were getting like sub 20 frames per second, even on the 2K map. So uh, performance has been increased rather significantly. Another thing that's been improved over the first one is the materials themselves or the textures themselves. So uh, right now, it, these are tiled rather large. I can decrease the size of these if I want so they don't look as blurry or noticeably bl blurry. Um, but the blending between the masks, as you can see here, and the snow and the rock and everything, it all looks much better. So um, let's go ahead and open up the material instance. And it's the same thing as the first one. If you bought the first one and used it, it's almost exactly the same thing. So I took out the auto landscape material function for ALMMC for two for this one because it in the first one it was creating a bunch of problems and a, it was a performance hog. Um, plus it was doing something that this product was not designed to do anyways. The reason why I had it in there is so people who didn't have masks could just throw their landscape in and apply ALMMC and then you can choose between having custom masks or not but still getting a difference between grass and rock blends but that in itself was not what this product was designed for so I took it all out now it's mostly just a mask compositor but it still does a lot of stuff in the background automatically that it didn't do before so it's still an auto landscape material but you're implementing maps that you are making in other programs so you can composite them into your landscape. So there's still a lot of automation going on, which is why I kept the name. Um, but now there's just no, uh, you, there isn't an option to choose to use custom 
masks now. They're just there by default. Um, but you still have the option to use a custom landscape color map and normal map. Keep in mind that the normal map is still experimental. I'm trying to figure out a good way to blend the landscape normal in with the normals of the textures. It's causing some problems, um, but I can turn it on here. And just like before, I can, it, if, I disc, if I uncheck it, it's not available. If I check it, it's available. Um, but now I can actually go to, uh, let's see, splash, splash maps, and I can load up the normal just like that and it will implement so in this case um, it's not doing much uh, I may have have it I may have it at a at, as a, in a position where it's working um, but uh, I'm not entirely sure so the normal map string if I turn that off it goes completely dark uh, if I increase it even just a little bit Oh my geez. Oh my geez. There we go. <laughs> if I increase it even just a little bit, it looks like it's being implemented. So um, there's there's still a lot going on here that might not be working with the normal map. So uh, it's experimental, just so you know. I just am going to keep that unchecked by default. Okay. So um, now what will happen is ALMMC will try its best to see what your landscape size is based on the landscape coordinates. <clears throat> so you don't have to automate or manually check this anymore. But um, just so in case things do not work, I still have the manual selections here. So if I were to select 1009, you can see here it updates in real time, but things aren't mapped appropriately. Same thing if I were to check 4033, and same thing if I were to check 8129. So um, now it's going to try its best to find the coordinates of your landscape and implement them automatically, but you still have the manual selection here if you need it for whatever reason. So um, there's that. Okay, so you have all your custom masks here. So we have, uh, and they're named appropriately, and you also have the strengths form. The strengths work in real time as well, so you can turn on and off snow if you need to. Um, you can increase the strength of it if you need to. At some point, you're going to hit the boundaries of your uh, actual mask. So try not to blow it out of proportion. <clears throat> um, and again, it works for every mask, so I can turn that on and off. This one's going to be a little harder to see because it's the rock map. If you look up here where the rocks are, you'll see it a little bit better. There you go. And then the stones, I can you can see a change down here. The stones, again, this is uh, the primary flow from the flow node in Gaia. So it's very mild. There's not a whole lot going on there, but I can blow it out of proportion if I want, or I can have it more of a subtle. I like, I like this one specifically at like six or seven. I think it looks pretty good. Um, and then the dirt mask, again, that one you can be turning that one on and off and if you look up in the uh, like the hills a little bit more you'll notice this one a little little better um, this implements a stony dirt material that will blend nicely with the you can see the, the material right there blends in with the gra grass and whatnot um, I think at 10 it looks okay but I like this one uh, again just more of a subtle effect in the more of the ridge valley areas uh, what I will eventually implement into this is color correction so you can color correct um, the materials I don't have that just yet but uh, I'll, I will be working on that so that's another thing I'm going to be implementing and then the same thing with the grass I'm not going to really play around with that um, you now have noise adjustments built into all the materials except for snow uh, and that was an, an issue that I had in the first one is the snow material had noise variation built into it and it would create like this shadowy effect on the snow. It's no longer there in the snow, but it is in all of the other materials. So it'll be in the, the grass, the dirt, the stone, the rock, all of that. So um, it'll all be there and implemented. So the next thing is... Um, uh, oh, and you have all the same adjustments here, so you can change the scale, you can change the noise if you want. Um, this is just the noise that I went with, but you can implement your own custom noise if you want. I do include some 
variation noise for you to play with um, as well as some starting textures but uh, for the most part you can uh, you can use your own <clears throat> so every material now will have an adjustments and the texture options separated so um, you can turn these down if you want individually and they all have the same sort of uh, control so you have like a texture size far and a texture size close so that's based on camera position so close will be the texture size close to the camera texture size far will be the size of the texture further away from the camera uh, and I'll show you that with the grass material because it's the grass material is like the more prevalent material uh, or texture I keep saying material but texture uh, so it's a lot easier to see matter of fact I can just show you right here so let's go down here um, so the texture size close, I'll play with that first. So we can reduce that to like 100. And you can see here it updates. And the repeating pattern uh, is not as prevalent because it is being uh, kind of varied with the noise patterns as well as the masks and other materials that kind of blend in. Um, so there are uh, not as noticeable repeating patterns, but you can see here there is a re repetition. It's just, especially when you look at this weed, uh, there's some repetition in the material, but it's not as apparent, which is nice. So you just got to kind of find the right size for where you're at. So 100 might be too small. I think 250 to 500 in this case is pretty good. I think 250 is probably the best um, for now. And then again, the texture size far, you can decrease that to be smaller if you wanted, or you can increase it to outrageous sizes. You can see here, you can kind of see the material popping in here. It's kind of blown out and pixelated, but 2,500 I think is a pretty good amount. And, uh, and the same thing here, you have the close far blend and the far range. So if I were to decrease this to say 500, now we have a close material directly under the camera, but our big material is a lot closer. If I were to change that to uh, 2500 which I also like now it's further away um, and we have this nice uh, smaller material but it's kind of being blended with a larger material in the distance so it so you don't have like re repeating tiles everywhere <clears throat> and all the materials will do that you can also change the brightness or the darkness of the material as you can see here you can make it really dark you can make it really bright um, I find a value of 0.5 to 0.9 to be really nice, or 0.05 to 0.09 really nice. Um, I thought 09 was rather nice because it wasn't too dark. So, um, another, additionally, um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to try to find a way to better uh, regulate the uh, material budget or the texture budget. So for now, not every material includes a roughness or a specular. Most of them include a roughness, but not all of them include a specular. I think it, the snow is about the only one that has a specular material applied to it. Um, so let's go ahead and move around real quick. And you can see here as we get out, we have a big material. As we get closer, we have a, a smaller material that crops in. And that'll be for every material, even the snow. Um, let's go up here to the rock real quick and I'm still working on making better masks in Gaia so we have better rock materials but I just wanted to show the triplanar mapping it's gonna look like garbage right now but um, that's because of my mask selection mostly but as you can see here we no longer have texture stretch stretching on really steep areas see it's all triplanar mapped and it all is mapped appropriately. So um, in this case, I can go to like the rock size close and I can change that to something like 10 and I can move way in. And you can see now we're starting to get some tiling for the small texture size. Normal maps work, but this is obviously too small, but we are not getting stretching. It's triplanar mapped all the way down the column and all the way up, and even with the grass here. So, looks pretty 
darn good for triplanar mapping. And then as you zoom out, we get a, a bigger texture. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this close size to maybe 250. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And then the far size will go to like, again, I think 2500 is a pretty decent look for pretty much all the materials. Um, but that definitely looks pretty good. And as you get closer, you can see how that kind of transitions pretty nicely. Uh, and then the same thing for the snow. Snow is triplanar mapped, um, but I know there are some issues here. So uh, for the snow, we are getting, and this is the case for a lot of the other materials as well, but you can see here the grass is blending in its uh, normal map. So there's that weed, and you can see the grass. And I know why it's doing that. It's because of um, uh, the the layering system that's required for this. The grass is the base layer, so we're getting the normal maps in, but we're also getting the snow map as well, or the snow normal map. So at least the snow normal map is working appropriately and the specular and roughness is working appropriately, appropriately too. So it's all working except it's just blending in normals where it shouldn't, and it does that for the rock as well. Uh, not on the steeper surfaces because that's where the grass is not at, um, so you see here, we're not getting the normal blending from the from the grass here, uh, except for where there is grass, obviously. It's going to be a little bit harder to see here. Um, but if you go down here, for instance, we have the grass normal coming in on the rock, on top of the rock normal. Jeez, I cannot control. There we go. As you can see here, we have like little leaves of the grass, the blades of grass and whatnot. Um, but again... Uh, they blend out re relatively nicely, especially at camera viewpoints. So where you're going to be at for like your height, if you have it like head level, it's not going to be as apparent. Um, but it it does happen. It's something I'm going to have to fix. Uh, so I know the issues there. I just have to fix it. I don't know how yet, uh, but yeah, I'm getting there. So overall, it's better performing. Uh, it's better looking. Triplaner's working. Um, it's, it's still super easy to use. You can still import your height map and apply this material to your landscape and get decent results in less than five minutes. So that is all the updates so far. Um, I also made the material itself super easy to understand. So if we go into here, you'll notice that it's a, it's a much more basic material. There's a lot in it but at the get-go, it's basic. So now you have all your masking here, as well as all your materials. So this is the mask outputs, and this is what blends them together. And these are your materials. These are the material instances. So I put a lot of work and effort into all these material instances, as you can see here. Um, and this is what creates the overall triplanar mapping for it. Uh, so there's a lot that went into it, and uh, I really appreciate those who were patient while I tried to get everything working. Um, again, I'm going to try to get normal mapping to work and some other stuff, but for the time being, this is definitely a much easier uh, masking compositor to use than the first one. But I look forward to hearing from you guys. Some people who have already put in some requests is uh, uh, they want an emissive option so they can have like lava and other things off their landscape. And I, I had planned on doing that anyways. I just haven't been ar gotten around to doing it yet, but I will be adding that. I'm also going to be adding tessellation to most of the materials. Um, so you have some like uh, height displacement uh, or perceived height displacement rather than just relying on the normals. So that will be implemented. I'm also going to fix that normal blending option where the base layer um, and then additionally, I'm probably going to be adding grass and stone objects to uh, populate on specific materials. So the grass material will have grass that spawns on it, so on and so forth. Um, and then after that, it's just maintaining and uh, updating with new features and whatnot as I see fit. So if you guys have anything you want to add, go ahead and add. Uh, you can join the Discord so we can talk about the ALMMC. And then um, if you haven't already anyways. And then I look forward to hearing you, your guys' comments. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you.